Hello everybody, this is the Hetek Word, our English language podcast, and I am Peter Morvay, news editor of our channel. This program is This Week in the News, where we select a commentary of a current topic. This week it is Ukraine, and the author is Stefan Bryan, a former American deputy undersecretary of defense, and is a leading expert in security strategy and technology. The title of the essay is Ukraine is at the tipping point. And it raises the question, what about the rumors saying the Ukrainian general Zaluzhny will soon be fired and replaced by Budanov? Rumors are making rounds in Kiev that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will fire the head of the Ukrainian armed forces, General Valery Zaluzhny. Zelensky and Zaluzhny have been at odds for some time. The accuse is likely to be losses in and around Adyevka, which is a Ukrainian military stronghold just north of Donetsk. The rumor says that Kirill Budanov, head of the military intelligence, will replace Zaluzhny. Field reports show that the Russians have advanced in the southern part of the town, knocking out numerous trenches and fortifications, with the Russian operation gaining momentum and strength as new troops are poured into the fight. There is little doubt that Russia will be successful. While the Ukrainian army may be able to delay the Russians, it lacks any ability to stop them cold. If Ukraine stri- tries to bring in extra forces to bolster their chances, they open themselves up to the Russian threats elsewhere along the line of contact. Adyevka, no matter its importance, is just an excuse for Zelensky. He needs loyal people around him as his situation becomes more precarious. His European and American allies, who still say they want to give him what he wants in arms and financial aid, understand that Ukraine can't stand up to Russian military pressure. This is why Europe is now in a panic and Washington is searching for a new policy. Europe believes that if Russia wins in Ukraine, as now seems likely, then Europe is threatened by Russia and Europeans are not prepared. NATO's chiefs and politicians in Germany, Sweden, Holland, Estonia, Poland and elsewhere are clamoring for strengthening NATO defenses. The nearly five-month-long NATO exercise starting in late January is an effort to demonstrate to Russia that NATO will stand and fight. But the exercise may also show the Russians just what they need to do if a conflict does come. NATO's alleged 90,000 soldier exercise has been given the lofty name Steadfast Defender. It is supposed to reinforce the notion of NATO's reliability. The Russians, meanwhile, have cancelled their big military exercise called Zapad, that is West, a message understood by Europe. Russia says it must focus on training its new soldiers, sailors and airmen. Europe has little to fall back on, as Europe's security is acutely dependent on the United States. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, perhaps well before, the Europeans have focused on social spending and have invested little in defense programs. Worse still, many of them have taken the strategic reserve war material and sent it to Ukraine, leaving them with empty shelves and warehouses. In Germany, which was supposed to rebuild its armed forces under the slogan Zeitenwende, that is turning point, the German government has been raiding the $108 billion fund to give money and arms to Ukraine. While Russia appears to have ordered its defense manufacturing companies to work additional shifts to produce armaments, little has been done in Europe or the United States to really move forward production. Instead, there are labor shortages, supply chain issues and slow procurement orders. Meanwhile, the US had unloaded most of its critical war finding supplies sent to Ukraine, leaving great uncertainty if America could rescue Europe, even if it wanted to do so. Putting aside credibility or lack of thereof of any imminent Russian threat to Europe, the US is changing its policy and is recognizing that it cannot win a conventional war against Russia, which also means that it can, can't win a conventional war against China, maybe not even Iran or the minuscule Houthis. All of this is clearly visible in Iraq, where U.S. bases and installations are regularly bombed by Iranian militias following orders from Tehran. Their goal is for U.S. troops to leave Iraq and Syria and, accomplishing that, demonstrate that the U.S. is unreliable and unfit to depend upon. The new Ukraine policy has been emerging over recent months. 
If understood correctly, the policy is designed to deal with the new reality that Ukraine will lose the war and Ukraine's government may need to evacuate Kiev. Putting Budanov in effective control of the new policy and the relocation of Ukraine's capital, probably to Lviv, is the bedrock of the policy. Operationally, the policy will be to use special operations, assassinations, bombings and any other means, including blowing up a nuclear reactor to punish the Russians and keep them off balance. Zelensky is already setting the stage, saying Russia will blow up a nuclear reactor. The Russians are no doubt nearly aware that the, that the target will be a reactor in Western Russia and it will be Ukrainian saboteurs who undertake the mission. For Washington, there are three imperatives. The first is to be able to keep the war going and to keep demanding money from the Congress. This is a hard act, because if Ukraine is collapsing, it will be hard to get buy-in for a losing proposition. The reality is likely to be that the Biden administration doesn't accept that the Congress will fork over more billions, especially if it is all but certain to go down a red hole. What they want to do is blame Congress and Republicans for the loss of Ukraine. The second imperative is to keep a pro-Western Ukrainian government functioning, even if it has to abandon Kiev. It also means that the current government has to politically survive. If a coup d'etat happens, all bets are off. So Washington needs to prevent a political breakdown. This is a tall order because Ukrainians are understandably unhappy, in fact miserable, as young and old men are forced to fight a losing war and many of them don't come home. The third imperative is to keep Russia out of Europe, meaning to keep European countries from cutting their own deals with Moscow. As Kiev goes, so goes Europe and NATO. If the Russians are able to put a pro-Russian government in Kiev, the Europeans will need to find a practical solution to living with Moscow. The key actor is Germany, and the current German government won't talk to Russia, at least not now. But that may change in the near future. If Ukraine falls, Germany will need to change its policy. The easiest way for its government to change direction is to blame the United States for something, such as the Nord Stream pipeline's destruction. That would open the door to a conversation with Putin. This was the somewhat chilling essay by Stephen Bryan. Thank you for listening to Hatech Word and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day and let's meet again soon.